Hey everybody, Josiah here with TheEasyCaters.com and today I'm just going to be walking through the settings of the Thinkorswim Position Sizer Indicator that uh, tells you your entry stop, target, share size, and, and some associated information um, for uh, whatever type of trading system you're wanting to set up. And this is a really important indicator, I think, that a lot of people um, a lot of people don't really pay much attention to position sizing, and it's really a turns out it, it really is one of the most important things in trading. So uh, uh, risk management, position sizing, and that kind of thing it turns out to be one of the biggest um, factors that goes into your success. So it's something that, that's important. And so I wanted to go walk through all the settings and show you how to use the indicator. So um, I'm on just a random stop. Actually, I was, uh, I was trading this today. Um, and so the way that I trade is that I, I usually look for like a, a situation where we have an uptrend like this, a pullback, and then I try to get in on the break of that pullback as a, the stock continues higher. So you can see here there were, uh, I, I would normally buy on the breakout of a, the high of a candle. And so that's how I have my position sizer set up here. So you can see there's a white line here that's going to be my entry price, a red line that is my stop price, and a green line that is my target price. And as you mouse over these uh, bars, each bar, it, the data box shows you what each of those values is. So you can see up in the top corner here that it's telling you your entry, your stop, and your target. You can also go into settings and turn on the floating data box uh, right here, or you can turn on the fixed one as well. But so now you can see that in the data box it's telling you those values for each bar that you mouse over. So that's uh, something that you can uh, be aware of to uh, customize how you use this if you like. I use those, uh, anything that's plotted on the screen will get added to that data box. And for that reason, I also provide, uh, which it's a little bit odd, but I provide a shares plot, which is by default, it's turned off. But if you turn it on, as you mouse over your screen here, you can see that it shows you the number of shares that you would be buying for each of these entries uh, with your chosen sizing criteria. Now, this is a little odd because if you, it's, it's actually a plot on the screen down here that's not a price, it's a number of shares. So sometimes it can overlap the chart and that gets a little confusing. But if you want it, it's there and it's turned off by default. So just be aware of that. Uh, otherwise, it, uh, the shares are normally plotted right here in the label and that's just for the latest bar on the chart. Uh, but if you want the bars prior to that, then you can turn it on in the plot. Now, uh, so let's just go go down the list here. So uh, I typically buy on the breakout of the high of a candle and a pullback such as this. And so I'm going to choose a long trade uh, and a break entry type is a break of the high. And normally I would use a candle or an ATR based stop. So if I set it to the candle stop, then that means it's going to use the low of the candle, the size of the candle itself for the stop. And so it would normally put the stop at the low of that candle. Uh, you can change that to ATR, which um, would allow you to use an, an ATR-based stop, and so it could be one times the ATR or two times the ATR. Now, you can adjust the ATR settings down here in the bottom. You can choose uh, what type of uh, aggregation period for the ATR. Uh, so, like... Um, the you know if you're wanting to use say so i'm a, on a daily chart right now well if you want to use the atr of the weekly chart then you could switch it to the week and uh, i'll show you what that does so you can see that that widens the stop quite a bit because it's using the weekly average true range to calculate that uh, stop uh, but by default it'll just be set on daily and you can change the average type for that atr and the average length and then you can change the multiple of, uh, of the ATR to use for the stop. So right now it's using 1.5 times the ATR as the stop size. Um, as far as the next settings here, so that's that's how you can uh, adjust these stops. So there are ATR-based stops, uh, Cassie Dev stops. I actually don't know how to pronounce her name, but <laughs> uh, and. I uh, was requested to add that type of uh, stop system to the indicator, so I added that. Uh, you can use a specific dollar offset. So if you want, you know, a two dollar stop or a three dollar wide stop, then uh, you can choose. You can set that here, and then 
stop dollar offset, you can choose that dollar amount right there. If you choose percentage offset, then you can set the percentage amount here. And uh, fixed price is where you can actually type in a specific price on the chart, like uh, 190 or something. So if I typed in 190 there, uh, you can see that it just puts the stop at 190 and calculates everything based on that. That's a little odd, but you can use it that way if you want. Um, the, so let's see. And so normally I would just use the candle and you can choose the candle aggregation period. So say you want to trade on the daily chart, but use the weekly candle as your stop. Well, you can set that here and you can see that that adjusts the um, stop and the entry to the weekly candle. So that's how that works. I'm going to leave that on the chart time frame for now, the daily chart. And so now you know how all these settings work. Uh, number of ticks in the, of padding. So you can add a tick of padding to the high and to the low. Um, as uh, So like uh, if you want to wait for a break of one penny higher than the uh, candle high, then you can add one tick of padding there and it will wait until that one penny higher has triggered, has been printed before it uh, triggers you in. And the same thing on the stop, it would be one tick below the low of the uh, candle. So that's what that does. And by the way, there are all these uh, tool tips here that explain each setting is uh, in a, at least a brief way so that um, you can get an idea what each one means that way. Uh, you can also, on intraday charts only, you can add the spread size to the um, to the um, stop size. So if you want to adjust or account for the spread, you can add that in, but that only works on intraday charts, uh, as is noted here in the note. Um, Thinkorswim only provides spread size for um, intraday charts or below. Uh, next, we've got target type. So you can choose different target types. So right now it's a risk multiple, which basically says, okay, what it's a multiple of this stop size. Uh, and right now it's set to two times the stop size. So the risk multiple takes this value and multiplies the stop size times that and plots the target that far away. Um, the dollar offset is the same for the stop. Uh, it's, it operates in the same way. So you can choose specific number of dollars above your entry. So say $4, uh, you can choose $4 above the entry and the, um, the target would be set accordingly. Uh, same thing with percentage offset. If you want 4% above the entry, then you can type that in and uh, just be aware that these, these numbers here are only paid attention to if you choose that setting here in the drop down menu. Then you've got uh, the equivalent fixed price. So if you want to set your target to 220, um, let me see here, 220. And I've got that set to fixed price. So now you can see that there's a specific, there's a target right at 220. Now let's see here. Um, let me change this back to risk multiple. And so next we've got uh, the risk per trade. So the risk per trade, now this is saying how much do I want to risk losing on each trade? So if I enter here and I put my stop down here, how many dollars am I willing to risk on that stop? Well, you can choose either a fixed dollar amount or a percentage of your buying power. So if you choose a fixed dollar amount, you can type in something here like $100 or $300, and that will calculate the number of shares based on how many dollars you want to risk between the entry and the stop. Uh, if you choose a percentage of buying power, then you can set this to, uh, whoop. Um, then you can set the percent of buying power to risk to 2.0 or 3.0 or 5.0, whatever amount you want to risk of your buying power per trade. And um, it, will it will size the number of shares according to that setting. So I like to use the fixed dollar amount just to risk the same dollar amount on every trade. So that's what I do. Now, uh, the 
manual or actual balance. Now what this does is it allows you to grab, automatically grab your balance in your account. And if you're using this, you know, percentage based, percentage of buying power, then it would be, um, it would automatically adjust to your account size and size your positions according to that actual balance. Or if you just want to be simple, you can type in your approximate balance here and it will um, calculate it as well. So there, the manual, it just allows you to either um, set a amount you would like to, like say if you're doing some back testing and want to theoretically uh, calculate what, how these things would be sized, how your trades would be sized, then you can set it to manual and put in a theoretical balance there and um, and then it would calculate it according to that balance or you can use your actual one. Now with the manual balance uh, or the actual balance, be aware that you can set your buying power leverage. So 4.0 here is the same as saying I want four times that cash balance uh, to be available as buying power. Thinkorswim provides this as intraday buying power, uh, up to four times leverage for intraday buying power. Two times uh, is your typical margin. So if uh, if you set it to two times, that would just be for overnight swings. They would usually allow you to buy up to two times your buying power uh, on margin, or two times your account balance on margin. Um, and you can put it as high as 4.0 for intraday trades for uh, day traders, or um, for if you just want it to be the actual cash balance, you know, or if you have if you don't use a margin account at all, then you can just set it to 1.0, and that will act just be the normal um, account balance. Uh, then, of course, we've already gone over percent of buying power to risk, and um, now let's see here. We you can use the margin percentage. You can turn that on or off. Uh, so what this is uh, referring to is this is referring to uh, futures trades. Um, so if you if you have a specific uh, margin percentage of the contract value uh, that you're um, trading with that you're only required to have, then you can set that here. Uh, I'm not a big futures trader currently, so I I actually don't know a lot about this. I just know that you uh, that your uh, margin on a futures position is not always the contract value itself. So you don't have to have the actual contract value in your account. And so this allows you to uh, say, yes, I want to uh, take the margin requirement into account and only require that amount of buying power for the position. So that's how that would work. That's only applicable to futures traders. Uh, we've already gone over the ATR settings. The Cassie dev stops, you can choose which one is going to be your actual uh, um, stop. There's a warning level, a standard deviation one, two, and three, and you can choose which one of those uh, you want to use as your stop. You can plot all of them or turn them off. And then we've got share rounding. If you want to round off your shares to the nearest 10 shares or the nearest 100 shares or whatever, you can enter that number of shares here to round to and then turn this setting on and that will round off your share size. Um, you can tell it to plot the entry targets and stops here on the chart. Uh, you can tell it to plot the Cassie dev stop lines if you want. Um, you can choose an offset for the label. Now this is an interesting setting. It allows, so normally these labels are showing the values for the most recent bar, which is the zeroth bar. So if you put zero here, that means the most recent bar that's currently forming. If you want it to be based on the bar prior, then you would just click this up, and this means one bar ago. And so that would uh, base all these values on one bar ago. So that allows you to customize those labels a lot better. Uh, now you can turn any of these labels on or off as needed. And all, so all those drop downs are just to control which of these labels are showing. And so that completes a review of all the inputs. Now you've just got your plots down here in this plot sub panel. So you can turn on the entry. Uh, you can uncheck this show plot box next to any of these um, any of these plots and it will turn that off. You can also customize the color 
uh, the line thickness, the line style, and so forth. So all these has its own setting that you can turn it on or off at will here with the checkbox. And um, that should be pretty self-explanatory. The globals section down here, this just shows you uh, color pickers for each of these labels. So you can go through here and customize what the labels look like. Uh, the text colors are not controllable by the user. Uh, Thinkorswim controls those automatically, so I have no say in that. Uh, so we, we can't really customize the colors at all. Uh, the text only uh, for the background. So that's how that works. Um, so this has been a, uh, a review of every single setting that I know of for, this, uh, for the position sizer indicator. Um, hopefully this has been valuable to you guys and will help you, um, you know, get up and running as quickly as possible. Now, again, if you have any uh, issues on the run, on the fly, just click these little question marks and that will give you a quick uh, explanation of each setting. And if uh, worst case scenario, if you can't figure something out, just send us an email on the website and we will get back to you as soon as possible. So hopefully that helps and I appreciate it. We'll talk to you later. Thanks.